Jimbo Paris, and you are listening to the Jimbo Paris Show. All right, how's it going? This is Jimbo Paris. Today we've got JD, the author, lives in New York City, was born into foster care. He renewed himself. He has a deep drive, transforming and helping people overcome obstacles. Let's see what he has to say. How's it going, man? Everything's going good. Everything's good. How about yourself? Great, great. Can you sort of give me a brief summary of who you are, what you're about, and what your message is? All right. Hi, everybody. I'm I'm JD, the author. Um, who I am, I'm a 29-year-old male, New York City, grew up in foster care, later transitioned my life to the streets. Right now, I'm raising three boys on my own. So my basic my message is just that you can heal. That's my message that no matter what you've been through, all the all the roads, all the obstacles you go through, you can heal, especially when you come from environments like I come from. So I didn't have like a lot of goals coming up, but as I got older, I knew I wanted to accomplish something. And when I was like used to go to juvenile facility, I used to read a lot of books. So I was like, I knew my life was crazy, so I'd like my life would probably be a book. So I kind of started writing a little bit, a little bit here and there. I would write. Then eventually, um, as time went on, like I, I, it was something I always wanted to do. And then eventually, when life really hit me, I, I just I buckled down and got it done. And how did you do that? How did you buckle down? By getting focused, I had to cut off a lot of my distractions. I, I had to channel in my pain. I had to. I had to focus on healing a lot of the things I've been through. So there was certain things in my life I've been through, like not having parents and and just certain battles I faced, um, being in the streets, incarceration, all those things. I knew I wanted to be better. I know I want to set the example. Like I got a lot of friends that's still in jail, a lot of friends that's gone. So I really want to show another way. What motivated you to help people? What motivated me to help people was the fact that I felt like it was not a, it's not enough help out there now. There's not enough people trying to help. There's not enough people that really care about people that where I come from, you know. So I feel like when you when you really one of the people that that comes from that environment, when you really come from there, you know, like it's not a lot of avenues to turn. There's not a lot of of positive role models out there. What do your kids see in you? My kids see me. That's a that's a great question. My kids, they see me sometimes more. I see myself. I see myself. They see me as a superhero. They see me. They see me as like one of the greatest things has ever created. One of the greatest humans. One of the best fathers ever. And sometimes, as a as an adult, you feel like you fall short. And what motivates you to keep going? My children. The fact that I never had before, giving them a life I never had at all giving them things I never could imagine I had or just giving them an upbringing I never had, like stability, giving those things. That's what, that's what keeps me motivated. Did your children motivate you to write your books? Yeah, definitely. They, it was a part of their motivation. What mostly write, motivated me to write my book was the fact that it, it, it was how much of a healing it, was, it brought to me and, under, and sharing my story I know could help others heal when they read my story. I've always been this motivational guy, even even coming up when I was in the streets, I always whether even if it was sometimes it might not have been in a it, it wasn't always in a positive light, but I've always been motivational. I always was one of the guys that even when I was young, I had a house or had a car, I had something going on. So it was always pushing my brothers or, or the ones around me to do more. I was always I had my first child at 17. I was always taking care of my kids. So it was always I've always been there like the one. To be like, oh, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta take care of our kids. We gotta do what we're supposed to do. And one thing that definitely makes you stand out is, you know, you're an entrepreneur, but you also had a pretty tough start. You had kids quite early. Was that? Yeah. Explain the experience. The experience. Well, for me, I always wanted kids early. That was something I always wanted because I didn't have much of a family. So I grew up in foster care. So things, things for me, was it wasn't a lot of unconditional love. It wasn't a lot of love around. 
So I knew, like, once I have kids, that will bring my unconditional love. So I always wanted kids early. So the process was once I figured, once I found out I was having kids, I knew I was going to, I was going to always be there for them. I didn't, I didn't say I plan to have a lot of kids as much as I got now, but it happened. Was it a blessing in disguise? Oh, definitely. It, it was definitely a blessing in disguise. Without them, who knows where I would be. I would definitely be dead or in jail without them. You know, you raise a very good point because I think a lot of people are very ignorant to this this kind of divide. So how was how was life in the streets sort of how how is the mindset different from somebody that's grown up in a more modernized middle class environment? The mindset is is completely different from it's sheep or wolf mindset. You know, you're either gonna be the hunter or get hunted. So you you have to make a choice early. You know, I say a line in my book that really most of most of people that's everybody that's in the streets in kindergarten they never just nobody ever said they wanted to be that. They never wanted to be in the streets. Nobody ever said they wanted to be a gangster, a thug, a murderer. Nobody ever wanted to be those things. We didn't want to be those things. A lot of us we come from bad backgrounds or bad environments, and these are the things we see. These are the things that we see growing up and it becomes us. And that's what we become. We become a product of our environment. For me personally, I've always did whatever it took. I never, I didn't never take no as an answer. I always had to find a way to make it happen for me. So that's, that's how I mastered. I just always, I knew that there was all, there's always a way something can happen. Like I, I don't take no, like, oh, it can, I don't think something's impossible. I don't think anything in life is impossible. So I just, I just go after it. If I want to do it, I just go after it. And that, that's how I master survivors, and that's how I, I'm still here today. You, you, you've sort of taken this mindset and you've applied it now to your entrepreneurship goals. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. That's, that's what a lot of people have done. Um, you could look in 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 the, in the music industry from the Jay Z's to the Fifty Cents to most to most artists today. They take what they learn in the streets and they apply it to their business. Because in reality, it's almost all the same. It's all if you can, I said, I also said in my book, if you can run a, a drug enterprise, you can definitely run a corporation. It's just, you're just doing it legally. One is illegal, one is legal. That, that's actually a really interesting way of phrasing it. What types of tips does your book give to a lot of people? You get the tips you, you're going to get is how basically how I dealt with my depression, some of my mental disorders. You, you're gonna get the the mindset of not giving up. You're gonna you're gonna get the mindset of pushing through. That no matter you you're gonna see certain obstacles where you would think that it'll be like, oh man, this man should just throw in the towel. Even times I wanted to throw in the towel, I didn't. So you're gonna get a lot of those, and you're gonna see, wow, if, if he could do it, I could do it. If he could do it, I can do it. Did that transpire to your kids too? Yeah, definitely. I would like to hope so. I would like to. I would like to hope as a father. That's why I'm instilling them the most. That, that really, like, they got more, even more opportunity than I did. I like to think of them as being more advanced in the stage of when I was their age. When I was, th- I hit my first. I hit my first blend at nine years old. So for them, they're like so much further because they're like in school playing sports. I didn't. I didn't care about none of that stuff as a kid growing up. So it was like. I just wanted, I want them, want them to be better than me in a sense. So I, I would like to think, I tell them all the time that y'all are way more blessed than I ever was. Another thing uh, that was fascinating is you were kind of involved in rap too. Yeah. Was, uh... Um, I used to do shows and I used to perform. So like, I like being in front of people. I like, I like cameras on me. I like, I love it. I love, I love just sharing a message. I love talking about what's going on. I love. I love talking what's real, like that's the type of person I am. Hmm. What type of rap were you involved in? Well, I did I, I like to say more of real stories. I like to I always tell my story. I always was willing to talk about what's going on, what's going on in my community, the things that's happening. Hmm. That's really cool. And do you think you would ever sort of use any of your songs as a way of helping the community? Yeah, definitely in a poetry sense. Um, 
I love poetry. The fact you could take nothing like from whether it's a, a poem, a song, or a painting, you take nothing and you turn it to something. It could be, just think about it as a painter, right? You, you got this blank canvas and it's just there. And only thing comes off of it is the things that's inside your mind. It, to me, that's just, that's just the coolest thing ever. Like even when I write, when I write, it's nothing on the page, it's nothing. It's just blank paper. And then everything I, that forms in my brain, the words that form in my brain, and it goes on the paper and it's just, it's all created. I, like I said, I love art. So you love art because it's the beauty of turning nothing into something. Yeah, I love that. And uh, and uh, create to be able to create. There's no limitation on where the mind can go. That's interesting. That's interesting because I could see where that that comes from. The love you have for your kids too, because they they were sort of like art too in a sense, because you created them out of nothing yeah. into something from you. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. How did you sort of pull yourself out of, you know, those experiences that you've had or you've seen with your family? I'm just curious. By not, by facing my past, by accepting it, by accepting things I can't change. That was the biggest thing for me, by, by starting to accept my past. You know, like for a long time, I, I battled myself and the fact I never even seen my mother's face before. You know, I don't. I never seen she look. I used to really bother me, and, and seeing other people happy with their moms, that used to bother me. Like, I, why couldn't I feel that? So, be accepting it and accepting coming to acceptance with them things and accepting that you know some things that something like that is is out my hands, out my control that I can't control that and and you know understand that my mom just had a drug problem and and there was nothing I could do and I understand how life works now and understanding I came to the understanding that. On, life is hard and people cope with life in so many different ways and aspects and I don't know what she went through so it wasn't I became more like sim sympathetic for her situation than being angry and that's what caused me kind of to heal and, and start healing is because I started to understand and gain an understanding and accepting things I can't change that's what you did to overcome your obstacles you accepted the situation and that sort of allowed you to overcome the problem and become the man you are today. Yeah. What's your business's mission? Sort of the statement. Oh, my mission. Oh, I, as I just said, um, for, for people whose vision might get overlooked because of their circumstance, there's people who go through things. There's people who, who got a story to tell that may not feel like they're in a position to tell it, or they may not feel like they, they, nobody wants to hear them or, they might be they might be even incarcerated. So my job is my job and my company's job would be to get their story out there. So are you self-published? Yeah, I'm self-published through my publishing company. And um the physical copies will be out at the end of the month. I had I, I did a test run with the ebook. I wanted to throw the ebook out there. I was so anxious to get it out. I didn't want to put it there. I wanted I wanted to gradually and I wanted it to get better. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna put this ebook out there. I wanted people, so that's when we debuted number 10, top 10 Amazon bestseller. So when I seen that, I seen the responses gotten and then the responses got. It. So I was like, okay, now I, I gave it a little bit. I was like, okay, let me get, let me get everything right for the physical copy. I went, I went through some things. Um, my son ended up in the hospital, my youngest son. So a lot of things, a lot of more obstacles came through my way. Um, I ended up with COVID. I was supposed to put the physical copies out in December. So I ended up getting COVID. Um, my son ended up getting sick, so it was just a battle after battle. A lot of, a lot of um, hills I had to climb to get to this point where the physical copy is, but it, it's it's on the way, and it'll be out at the end of the month. What about the book cover? Oh, the book cover, yeah, the book cover. Um, basically, um, I I wanted to d display a book that when you when you look at it, it grabs you. I wanted it to grab you from from first look. When you look at this, I wanted it to be intense. Okay, okay post-traumatic right streets disorder. Okay, quite interesting. So you see, like I said, I wanted to, to captivate the um the person the person with the hood represents. You see, he has no face because a lot of times we we don't we don't know who we are. We get lost in who we are. We lo we lose a we lose a, a sight of ourselves. 
So that's why he has no face, you know? And it's a crossover because I want to be this corporate guy, but I got all these demons on my back. So you see the hoodie, a hood represents, you know, a lot of things when you, it represents a lot of things when you try to cover up. So that's what that is. Then you see the, um, the basically a lot of the, all the things that go on in the background. So yeah. What about the uh, the cracks? From broke for the stand represents broken glass. Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Definitely, it's on Amazon right now. So if anybody want to, if anybody want to get that, it's on Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Now, while we're already here, maybe we should take a look at your website, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, it's getting it's getting updated. Um, I got blogs on there. Um, you could read. It's it's my writings as you scroll down, and it's getting updated as we speak. I have somebody actually working on that, and I work. I do a lot of work on it myself. And what about one of your uh, blog posts, microwave love? Oh yeah, microwave love. I wrote that one because I feel like I feel like people fall in love too fast. Uh, so that was just my way of just saying that take your time. Okay, okay. And let's see. What about the shop? That's where you sell your book? You said the shop, yeah, that's where the book is gonna be on sale. Um the pre-orders are coming out tomorrow. So you'll be able to pre-order after tomorrow. You will be able to pre-order the book straight from me, and then it'll, you'll be able to pre-order straight from me. And it's going to be in a lot of bookstores. Um, Barnes and Nobles is picking it up. Um, probably Walmart. So it's going to be it's going to be in a lot of places. It's definitely a unique name, though. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, um, we're working on something because we want we want we want we want professors to be able to talk about this because this is something that really this is a real problem that goes on in my community a professor so who who do you think you want to speak to like a a race yeah not and not just a race because i want people to understand the people who judge i don't i also want to take a lot of the judgments off to understand like that guy that's out there he may not have a choice before you judge him Maybe try to give him an opportunity with a job. Try to see what we can do to, to, to fix the real problem because a lot of these a lot of people that come from these apartments, we didn't choose where we got to live. We didn't we didn't choose that our parents it was our parents that that lived in the hundred. We just grew up in the, we grew up in these communities and we became our community. We 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 can't help we was born in a community that didn't have a lot of resources and and, and the things that the resources that we had to look up to, the things we had to look up to was the guys on the corner who was making money. That's that's that was my role models coming up. My role models was the guys on the corner that was hustling. The guy that didn't take no crap from nobody. The guy that didn't mind that didn't mind getting into them confrontations. The guy that stood up for himself. The guy that he had a pocket full of money. He was giving it out to the kids. That's the guy. That's the guy I idolized. I didn't idolize nobody on TV. If you could go back in time and tell your younger self some advice. What would you tell him? I would tell my younger self to take advantage of every full advantage of every opportunity. Don't let it, don't waste none of them. Um, don't waste time. That's that's the biggest thing. Stop rushing. Stop rushing everything. Take your time. Those are the things I would tell my younger self. Cause I feel like I would have been so much further. I would have told my younger self, um, the things I thought was cool ain't cool. A lot of things I thought was cool coming up, they're really not cool. The cool thing was would have been to to get my education, to to go maybe to get a you know to get a job or to go to, to go to college or something. That that would have been the cool thing to to learn more. You know, I mean, I'm glad to where I, I got to though, and I don't regret nothing I've been through. But those are those are things that I would have told myself. And would that be the same advice? you would give to your kids? Yes, definitely. I tell them all the time, don't rush things. Stop rushing. Stop rushing. Take your time. Take full advantage of every opportunity. Whatever you do, put your all into it. I, I tell them that all the time. If, if you're not going to put your all into something, why do it? If you're going to give a half effort, why do it?
why even waste your time? You're just wasting time at that point. You don't look like a guy that puts in half effort. No. I have, though. I, I can't lie and say I, I have. Even when I was doing my music, I was putting in half. There was times I would put in half effort. Because I was worried about other stuff, like love. I was worried about relationships. I was worried about everything else but making music. So that's why that, that didn't really work out for me. But uh, there's no doubt in my mind if I would have approached it with my all, that I wouldn't have made it. But you did put in all of your effort with the book, though. And that oh, yes. Yeah, I put I put blood, sweat, and tears, and I put all of me into that. And everything going forward that I do, whether it's this interview, whether whatever it is, my all is into it. I don't have to do nothing no more. What's some advice you have to give to the audience today? Some advice I have to give? Number one, don't give up. Don't give up no matter how tough it gets. Because the the next day could be the day the sun come out for you. So just, just keep going. You know, the, the storms only last so long. You know, every storm, every storm has an ending. So just keep going and, and that sun's gonna shine again. And when it shines, you just appreciate it. Embrace, embrace your struggle too. Don't 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 shy away from it. Embrace it. Embrace everything about it. This has been a great interview. Thank you again for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. All right. And we'd also like to give a special thanks to our sponsors. Uh, the first person I'd like to thank is Allison Roberts. She's done really well for this show. Grab a copy. It's called Behind the Power. It's an excellent book, and it serves as a powerful tool to transform lives and to kind of empower yourself as a person. The next sponsor we have is LifeWork Systems. We're an affiliate sponsor and collaborative partner. LifeWork System is very focused on also helping and transforming people's lives. And also support me on Patreon and also look at us on Roku TV channel as well. All right. Thank you again, sir. I right, thank you for having me. Yeah. Be All blessed. Right, I'm everybody. Jimbo Paris. This is the Jimbo Paris Show. Thank you for listening to the Jimbo Parish Show.